today's episode, we're just basically going to be talking about paid ads on TikTok, budgets, uh, successful campaigns, things like that. Um, as you guys know, we are Morgan Brandon. We're a marketing and TikTok agency, and we currently focus mostly on organic TikTok. Um, so I thought it would be really good to invite Revel, who is a paid ad specialist, to share his insights and thoughts and, and tips and tricks into TikTok ads. So Revel, if you want to start by just introducing yourself. Thank you so much for having me, Anna. I watch um, yourself and the crew do the TikTok lives whenever I can. It's about 8 p.m. here in Brisbane, Australia. So it's uh, the ideal time of night for me to be talking about this kind of stuff because I'll be working for the next sort of four hours. Um, but essentially what I do is I help a lot of our clients across Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok acquire new clients through paid advertising. So um, TikTok's a very exciting space for us at the moment because if anyone's used paid advertising on Facebook around that sort of 2014 to 2017 time range, if you want, you would know that those were kind of like the golden eras of running ads because to run ads were very cheap. And then it's only gone up and up and up. And then, you know, hey, presto, here comes TikTok, uh, which is this fantastic opportunity to uh, relive some of those really cheap advertising exercises for use of a better explanation. So, yeah, very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, perfect. And um, you typically work with like small businesses, startups, things like that? Yeah, like I really enjoy working with the you know, the kind of one man or one woman bands in the trenches. The startups are lots of fun because you have direct access to the founder and that most of them, the vast majority of them are very open to ideas and open to, um, you know, certain strategies that might be slightly different to what they originally anticipated. And it's a lot more fulfilling to have someone, uh, to give someone some direction and have them validate an idea or validate a product or validate uh, a service and do that in a short space of time and then give them that reassurance. Because I think as all business owners uh, experience at some point is when you get your first few sales and you get that momentum, you're like, yes, my business actually freaking works. I'm so happy. <laughs> and that's the kind of feeling yeah. I would have for every single startup or small business owner is to number one, get their first runs on the board and get a few sales. Uh, and or just see their advertising budget work and actually get a, a return on investment as well. So, yeah, lots of fun. So to start off, Revol, um, can you tell us a little bit about TikTok ads in general? How, how do you start off with them? What experience you've got with them? So in a nutshell, easiest place to start with a lot of unknowns uh, is Google. So for anyone starting up with a TikTok campaign, a paid TikTok campaign for the first time, uh, you would want to Google TikTok Ads Manager, go to the first result, you'll see tiktok.com, da 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 Ads Manager, something like that. And you would just simply follow the prompts to setting up your TikTok Ads Manager for the first time. Uh, it's then going to take you through a process of setting up a campaign up until you then add your debit or your credit card or your payment card. And then once you do that and you hit publish, you essentially have created your first TikTok campaign. I will say this, for anyone that's used Facebook or Instagram before as a paid marketing uh, exercise, uh, very refreshing that TikTok is very seamless and it's a lot, it's a lot more user-friendly for someone that has never done paid advertising before to then come into TikTok and do paid advertising. It's very seamless. Um, it's, you know, pretty difficult to get lost because the, the prompts and what it's telling you to do and the instructions are very straightforward. So it's good whether you're getting someone to do it for you or, you know, even better if you're doing it for yourself. Yeah, amazing. And um, what impact do, do paid subs tend to have on a business? Good question. I would say <laughs> you have a lot more assurance around when you can expect new customers, right? Yeah. So... That's the reason why I started in it all those years ago. So I've been playing with Facebook advertising for the last decade and TikTok the last two years as it was made available here in Australia. And I, the, I will never forget the first day that I ran a Facebook ad and it was like I could only afford like $5 a day when I was starting out. And I, I think I could only afford like for 10 days, so 50 bucks. 
And that $5 a day in Facebook got me something like, you know, 50 to 70 cents leads. Like you just yeah. unheard of. Like you could barely get an email address for that, let alone a <laughs> general inquiry. And that was massive. And I was like, well, wh why would I go putting pamphlets on people's cars? Or why would I go hand out pamphlets in the local, local, you know, mall or supermarket? Like when yeah. I could just sit here and press a button <laughs> and watch the inquiries come in. So that was, a, that was a heavy learning curve for me. And I think I was very lucky to just kind of fall into that. And so the impact that it can have really is super fast results. Like, majority of our clients they will see leads within the first 80 uh 80 the first 48 hours sooner than 80 the first 48 hours from when the campaigns actually go live and that's simply because tiktok is just such a fast moving platform and is able to deliver your ads out to so many people in that target audience very quickly on a rage rule we said facebook is a minefield um, oh yeah, and I think like you know, ads kind of on the different platforms are probably a little bit different to TikTok because with TikTok, obviously, you've got the for you page, you've got the in feed ads. So you know, sometimes it's hard to actually tell what an ad is on TikTok. Um, mm. You know, TikTok slogan is "Don't make ads, make TikToks." So how do you kind of um, differentiate those, those ads for the different platforms and make sure that an ad on TikTok is scroll stopping, feels like it's in the view page? Like, wh what are your top tips for that? Good question. I would say looking at some of your content around uh, topics to post and how to be more engaging. I know you've got one of those posts on the Morgan Brandage branding page which would be really helpful but as soon as i heard that slogan uh, make tiktoks not ads that really stuck with me yeah. and we've taken that over to our facebook and instagram advertising so whatever tiktok ads we create if the client also wants to run facebook and instagram we run those exact ads over on facebook and instagram and it has just as great if not better lift than whatever they're running on facebook and instagram in the past that's how good so tiktok's been ex exceptional at helping me personally and the team understand how to create engaging content that just so happens to be an ad. Do you know what I mean? But it doesn't yeah. feel like an ad. It feels yeah. much more like something you'd see organically in your feed, right? Yeah. So top tips would be uh, where you can having a person in the video helps amazingly. Yeah. Um, I would say one of the things I wouldn't encourage is to use slideshows of images and that kind of stuff yeah i found that to be number one it doesn't take up enough real estate like i'm in this portrait thing here i think i got it right um whereas your slideshows for the most part only take up about that much yeah and so you're not really using all of the uh real estate that's available to you yeah so top tips would be having someone in the video would be very direct very short very sharp and then following a very simple methodology if anyone wants once it, you can um, just save one of the videos at the top of my page and it's called how to make a video ad. And there's a three part formula that works for any platform, not just TikTok as a video ad. And that's your hook. That's your body of content. And that's your call to action. Yeah. And if you use that and then you edit your video ad together succinctly and take up the arms and the pauses, then you'll end up with something that's engaging direct to the point and that your audience feels understood by. For example, um, an example of a hook that I use a lot is if you're struggling to get to sleep at night, this is for you. So my hook within two to three seconds is calling out the problem that the customer is uh, experiencing and you know reassuring them that, hey, you should probably listen to this. And the body of content would be relating to their problem. Uh, so, for example, I was just on the call with a, a client who does blackout blinds. So the blinds that literally you close and the whole room goes black and it's more so for shift workers, right? And so, like, we understand that as shift workers, you need to sleep during the day and da 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 So that's the body of the content. We're trying to relate to the person. And then towards the end, we're saying how this product solves that problem. And then our call to action, which is click the link below if you want to purchase the product, find out more. So. Yeah. Uh, book, body of content and uh, call to action if everyone sort of structured their ads and ran it through that kind of filter uh, they would find their ads have an immediate lift compared to you know kind of doing the old school method of getting a perfect camera a perfect camera crew yeah. making all pretty and polished and making more of a tv commercial as opposed to something direct and to the point like a tiktok ad yeah
percent. And I think, you know, those tips that you've just spoke about, like having a hook that addresses a pain point, then positioning your brand as their solution, ending with a call to action, you know, that is the perfect formula. And from a consumer perspective, when you are scrolling the view page or you're scrolling through Facebook Reels or whatever, if if you get directly addressed to and something resonates with you instantly, you're so much more likely to to watch that video, to maybe click the button and, you know, it just works. So Love Writing Co. Solenda said, Rev is fab, tried TikTok ads, but Facebook worked better for me. How do I get TikTok ads to perform as well as Facebook? Whoa, what do they sell? Um, oh, I know her. She yeah. used to be in my membership. Oh, my God, she's going to hate me. I forgot her name. Um, Solenda. Solenda. I think it's the name. Um, how do you get your TikTok ads to perform as well as Facebook ads? So the thing with TikTok ads, the only con drawback, if you want, is your creative has to be more frequently produced than a Facebook ad. Generally speaking, yes, Facebook ads are probably three to four times more expensive to actually show the ad per thousand people, but it's less turbulent, as in you don't have to release as much creative as often. Just, yeah. It's just the way it is. TikTok, you'll probably find you'll need to release a new creative anywhere between once a week once every two weeks or, you know, probably at least once a month. So what I have our clients do is say, I'll give them a script. I'll tell them how to say it, tonality, all that kind of stuff. And they'll have, have anywhere between four to six videos before we actually go live. Sometimes we don't actually use more than the first video ad up until maybe the two week mark or definitely at the, the one month mark. Yeah. But that is the that's one of the parts of it is having enough creative to keep your results consistent because it's such an easy fix. But then you've also got to look at your offer. So I always reference this book, One Hundred Million Dollar Offers by Alex Hormozzi, and specifically the part where he talks about a value equation. And so, really quick brainstorm: you've got your Dream outcome, which is to help kids learn how to write sooner, mm -hmm. which is going to excel in their studies and education. Dream outcome for the parents, that is. <clears throat> and then you've got the perceived likelihood of achievement, which you've got to address in your offer. How likely is it? Do I feel like my customer is going to achieve that for their kids? Then you've got the time delay. How long is it going to take my kid to uh, learn how to write effectively? And then you've got the effort and sacrifice. Is there anything required for me as the parent um, and obviously other than buying the product or the service that is going to uh, require more time and resources from me for my child to uh, reach that objective. Yeah. So if nothing else, um, that value equation in that book, you apply that to a really good TikTok video ad if you want and have at least four videos to go, and that is putting your best foot forward with TikTok. And I guarantee once you have a win with TikTok and that's profitable for you, especially e-commerce, it's even more turbulent. You'll take that whole effort, move it to Facebook, and that'll perform even better than your current Facebook stuff. So on a ray jewelry said, what do you do if your product doesn't have a problem such as jewelry? So when we were talking about addressing that pain point as a hook, what yeah. if, you know, what if someone doesn't know how to to position their product? Yeah, good question. So I mean technically you can still run it through the same filter if you want. It's still a problem. The problem is, like, why do we get jewelry to begin with? I know, like, this this watch has sentimental value, but let's say it doesn't. Um, I did buy it because I really, I really liked it. I like the face. I like the fact that it was all metallic, um, and I didn't have a watch like it. And I wear this watch just about every other day. I wear this watch because it makes me feel some sort of way. So you could say potentially it is a flex on status. But, oh, look, and I do get compliments on the watch like every, you know, every few months and that makes me feel good. So there's almost like a potential for makes me feel a little bit more confident uh, without sounding too pig headed, but it makes me feel a little bit more confident, um, almost like a status thing as well. I'm not driving a Ferrari, but, you know, I've got a, a nice ish watch on. You know where I'm going with that? So that's the ballpark where you're sitting in with your jewellery. You're solving a problem of making people feel a certain way or giving people the opportunity to, you know, in their own minds, achieve a certain status. One of the things we did way back when on Facebook, this is really tongue-in-cheek, um, but our positioning was your friends are going to be so envious when you have these earrings on. You know what I mean? And that's a big point as well. So there is an element of status in there. Uh, but that would be the the angle that you would probably run with is with the jewellery is how do you want someone to feel when they're wearing this jewellery? You could potentially go down the route of 
pain points that you've that people have experienced with different styles of jewelry so you know i know that mm. jewelry tarnishes as quickly or it might go green or you know so you can kind of think how could what's my unique selling point and how can i position this as better than that that's that's probably an 80 percent of what i've just missed is hitting pain points no, i think both of those were like you know your your point was really good having you know the reason you buy jewelry is because it makes you feel good so um, you know, thinking about that. And I think product-based businesses that are not necessarily essential items, you know, people think, oh, well, I've not got a pain point, I've not got a problem, but if that was the case, no one would buy the product ever. So, you know, pretty True. much every product has got some sort of pain point attached. Especially in an industry like jewellery, like your individual product is proven. If people are buying earrings every day, people are buying rings every day, people are buying bra bracelets every day, help, you know, people are buying Pandora and charms every yeah. single day. So your industry has told you that you have a validated product to sell. Now it's up to you to identify how you're going to stand out in uniqueness so that people can see you as, or no one else does that. Or if they do see some similarities to your product, then maybe you do it better. Maybe you deliver yeah. it faster. Maybe you have a better after-sales service. Maybe they can send it back to you once a year and they scrub it and get all the green stuff off. I don't know, but mm -hmm. all of that kind of stuff as well. Yeah. yeah 100%. Uh, the Fragrance World said, we've just started TikTok ads. Happy with the re results so far, but it's only our first ad. Uh, our TikTok ads are performing better than Facebook currently. Facebook baffles me. Yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Fragrance World. That's massive. Uh, Northern Soul Sense said, when first running TikTok ads, would you leave auto-targeting on to build data or would you add a specific audience targeting based on your ideal customer? I usually start with open targeting because unlike Facebook, to, to compare the two, Facebook has much better granular specific targeting, full stop. Doesn't mean it's better because then the trade-off here is that TikTok is anywhere between three to four times cheaper to show your ad. Where you miss out on targeting, you gain in the fact that to place the ads three to four times cheaper. So you could kind of balance them out that way. But I always start with an open target and that works extremely well for small audiences. I would consider a small audience to be anything below 400,000 in the uh, potential reach box. So when you're in your TikTok ads manager and you're selecting your audience and interest and all that kind of jazz, in the top right, it'll give you kind of a potential reach. I would want that to be above 400,000 minimum. And if I can't get that, I start removing interests. I start to do less granular targeting. I actually zoom out to get a bigger audience. Because <clears throat> you've got to remember that if your creative is dialed in, you're following a really good script, you've got a really good video ad, and you've got a really good offer, the feedback loop that that TikTok algorithm goes through so intelligently will find your ideal audience anyway. You just won't see it on the back end, but it does happen. For example, um, a client who they're a registered training organization here in Australia and they want more because there's a trade shortage here in Australia. I don't know what it's like in the UK, but we need more concreters. We need more painters. We need more plumbers. We need more everything. All the guys on the tools. <laughs> and so one of the things that we found out was there's no way to target those people on TikTok. So we started with um, calling out all of those trades, plumbers, painters, um, waterproofers, concreters, so on and so forth. Within the first seven days of running that campaign, in the actual inquiry form, they, they selected which trade they were most interested in. And then, hey, presto, we ran it for another 30 days. And as more people were coming through as leads, the algorithm's all automatically targeting people who are most likely to fill out the lead form, which just so happen to be concreters. So it's not that we're doing our manual targeting to reach concreters or a specific audience is that we're letting the algorithm do what it's designed to do, mm -hmm. which is learn, which is this whole concept of machine learning. What do you think about running ads? Should we be creating organic content as well as ads? How often should we be posting the two? Um, you know, what's your opinion on that distribution between both of them? You should absolutely run both. Don't necessarily have to, but I'd love to see everyone do both. I'll be the first one to raise my hand. TikTok is the first platform I've taken organically very seriously. I yeah. slept on Instagram. I sort of slept on Facebook. Now I'm here on TikTok. I was like, well, I'm not going to miss this boat. We're actually going to yeah. push fairly hard with organic crime. This is the okay. third time we've been around the sun. I'm not missing out on this. The way that I look at it, 
two major points that stand out for me organically with TikTok is it's the only platform where you can have 100 views on one video one day and the next day you could have 11 million videos, uh, 11 million views on the same video, right? Yeah. It's totally possible. I've seen it happen quite a few times, really, really wild. Secondly, it's the only platform, you know, maybe with the exception of YouTube, but even then it's unreliable. When someone follows you, they don't just see the content you post from that day onward. They see all your content from previously as well. And I'm like, well, this is just like an email marketing list. Instead of me having to sit down and write emails and keep people nurtured and warm that way, I just said the TikTok algorithm do its thing and show <laughs> my content for 90 days. Like there's no there's no platform like that. So it's yeah. literally keeping and warming up your audience for you quite literally as you sleep. Like it's it's fantastic. So yeah. the fact that you can have an exponential amount of views for no particular reason and the fact that you have this kind of perpetuating content whilst you sleep to me is very exciting. Where the paid ads come in is just the fact that it's nice to run paid ads and, you know, get some inquiries and make some sales, but it's also nice to give people the opportunity to click, follow you, um, go to your page, see what you're all about and build that that trust and relationship with you. And, I mean, if you're running paid ads, it would be a miss. It would be, you know, a bit a bit sad not to also try and generate some followers from that exercise as well as generating new customers as well yeah. yeah i completely agree and we've we've had a question from uh, rose from obsidian impulse i hope this makes sense would you recommend pushing a post that already that's already posted or starting a fresh one to promote so that kind of follows on to my next question which was what are the different ads that tiktok offers and so we've got that promote feature we've got spark ads you know um you know, if we can answer Rose's question and then go on to the, the other variations as well. Um, good question. So Spark posts I only use, if you look on my profile, you see maybe two. One of them, I'm actually talking to builders in Australia because we're taking on quite a few building campaigns. That one was a Spark ad. The only reason I use that is because I'm pretty certain it went over a minute and your ads can only be 60 seconds, one minute. So if you have an ad that you really like and you feel like it needs to be over a minute, then post it as a post and then go through your ads manager on TikTok and select that post. Don't boost it. We'll talk about boosting later. Um, but, yeah, that would be the only use case for me personally where I would use the Spark ad. Otherwise, I create them from within the TikTok ads manager. I don't post them, but I, I connect it to my account so that when someone sees that ad, although it's not posted on my TikTok page, they still get the opportunity to comment, follow, all of that kind of yeah. good stuff. Because otherwise then my feed and our clients' feeds of TikTok end up with a whole bunch of selling content videos, which doesn't come off very nicely. You know what I mean? A Spark ad is where you've got an organic TikTok that, you know, maybe you've performed well and you want to push that further and run that as an ad. And then we've got the promote feature, which kind of boosts a post. And then we've got, running an ad through the ads manager which is you know the the, the way that you'd recommend 100 percent, yeah you make a good point uh there is an opportunity that let's say that you've got a hundred thousand views and you're like well i'm going to boost this and see if i can get more views i think that's great um i don't see any reason not to do that it's just that unless your organic posts are so well thought through that every single one that you post has a solid call to action and is telling people to buy your stuff or make an inquiry, then, you know, if you happen to, let's say, go viral and get a million views on a content video, is that content piece set up in a way that asks your customers to do something like go to your website or make an inquiry or purchase a product? It's kind of neither here nor there, but for the most part, um, I reserve the Spark ads for anything over a minute and most yeah. majority of the ads I'm creating within the TikTok ads manager. Well, I think in summary, promoting is just to boost that initial post or the organic post mm -hmm. and the paid ad is where you'd run it as a paid ad. It's not on the feed um, and it's got a clear call to action and you've kind of set that up for, you know, mm -hmm. for a return on investment to get. Would you be able to walk us through the process of, of setting up that TikTok ads manager uh, the campaign within that so talking about objectives what objective you know achieves what again we've kind of spoke a little bit about targeting um but you know different ad groups and creatives and, and things like that so 
This is what we're looking at. These are your objectives in TikTok Ads Manager, right? So you've got reach. I don't really use that. You've got traffic. I don't really use that. Um, lead generation is one we use a lot because that is to get a customer's personal contact details under the pretense they're going to be contacted about the service or a product that you plan to sell. And then the only other one we really use is website conversion. So anyone in e-commerce selling things online, this is what you're using. So it's really just lead generation, website conversions, but community interaction is really reserved for uh, paying for new followers. So that's a cool one, um, but it's it kind of depends on how much budget you're happy to put towards this because let's say that most business owners, when I'm consulting, majority of them can't really spend past $50 a day for 30 days. So it's about $1,500 or 1,500 pounds. Um, well, significantly less pounds, actually, considering the Australian <laughs> dollar. So let's say that you had 20 pounds that you could spend. You would be better off to do a use a direct objective like either lead generation if you sell a service. Let's say you sell solar panels or you, you sell marketing or whatever that is. You'd use lead generation if you need to talk over the phone to someone before making a sale. Um, website conversions is reserved for those of you who do e-commerce. So that £20 is designed to get your return as fast as possible. That's the intention. Put money in the bank as soon as possible. Those are the two objectives that are going to do that as fast as possible um, relative to what you're trying to do, either generate a lead or generate a sale. So I feel like we're kind of on that budget talk now. So how how do people go about budgeting for ads? What would you recommend the, the minimum to be? What, you know, yeah. what should people be, be paying, especially – a lot of our followers and the people that are on this live are small businesses. Um, so what, what are your tips for that? Um, I had to look this one up just to double check. So here in Australia, it's $20 minimum per day. You can't spend any less. Um, so what I found last night was that it's a minimum of £20 per ad set. So that's kind of like £20 per audience that you test mm -hmm. uh, or $50 when you're putting – it across an entire campaign. So let me tell you what the difference is. <clears throat> if you just wanted to spend 20 pounds, this is kind of contradicting because it kind of says that you can only spend 50 pounds. Um, but really, if you just run an ad to one audience or four ads to one audience, which most people kind of need to do anyway when starting out, you can only, you can then get away with only spending 20 pounds. So that's yeah. the quick answer, 20 pounds. Um <clears throat> What our testing methodology, if anyone wants to write this one down, it's super important. I don't know if anyone's ever worked with an agency back in the day and they're always saying, you know, just needs more time or just needs more dollars, needs more budgeting. Um, I figured out pretty quickly that that's, that doesn't really give you a lot of reassurance as a business owner, as a client. Like we want to know how much we're spending and for how long and when we should expect something. And I think that's fair. Yeah. Uh, so the testing methodology I recommend is when you're setting up and you're running your TikTok ads for £20 a day, run them for at least four days without touching anything. So on the fifth day, you can then make your significant edit or you can do your optimizing or you can go through and look at which ad got you the most sales or the most leads. The algorithm will probably do that for you, but you don't touch anything for the four days you're letting it run. The reason being is that all of these advertising platforms, they've always said since, you know, 2012, whenever they came about, each platform and each ad needs at least 8,000 impressions before making any significant edits. So it all comes down to what's considered to be what is statistically significant. We hope that this is like disclaimer, um, put what you think about the COVID jabs to the side, but we hope that they didn't test them on just one person and then throw them out to the world. Mm -hmm. So we hope that they tested them on at least 8,000 people. Probably not, but let's say they did. And it worked on hopefully 80% of those 8,000 people. And like, okay, this has got a high likelihood of working. The analogy here is instead of running your ads for one day and saying they don't work, you run them for just a little bit longer to four days to get your 8,000 impressions Mm -hmm. that's statistically significant enough in terms of a time horizon to run them for, for you to then have enough data to make a educated, informed decision on what to do next, whether you're going to let them run for another four days, see if they work, whether you're going to turn off some ads, you know, redistribute the budget to a better performing ad, or whether you're going to test a new audience, all yeah. of that good stuff. 
Yeah, but four-day testing period, if you take nothing away from today's chat, four-day testing period changes your life. You're like yeah. none of this week, two weeks, 30 days without touching things, four days is plenty. So what would you say makes a successful TikTok campaign? I, I feel like we've kind of covered with that, with the uh, the structure, like the hawk body yep. call to action. Um, That's okay. If you could give kind of like three overall tips on making a successful TikTok campaign, you think, you know, if you do these three things, you, you're going to hit the nail on the head. Nail your offer. Read $100 million offers by Alex Hormozzi. It's specifically study like it's your, I don't know what years of school you have over there. And it's like your big exams. But over here in Australia, it's year 12 is your big exams, and that's when you get into university or college or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you have to do really well in that exam. So study it like it's your year 12 exam, the, specifically the chapter on value equation. If you learn how to nail your offer, that then influences how you create your video ads, and your video ads will perform insanely well just from that point alone. So my top tip is actually to learn how to – put forward your best offer, which you'll get by reading $100 million offers by Alex Hormozzi. I should have a commission link the amount of times I reference this book. It's ridiculous. Um, it, insane. Like, I've listened to it on Audible, I, I would dare say, at least 12 times, like at least a couple of times a week, just picking up nuggets. But it's changed the way that I view clients' offers. Uh, it changes the way that I script their video ads for them to say um, so we're still using hook, body of content, call to action, but we're incorporating the best parts of their offer. You know, we're saying that for me personally, um, with the ads that I run to generate new clients for TikTok ads, I'm saying things like, you know, if you're in this industry, if you're a builder based in Australia and you need more leads, this is for you. Hi, my name is Rebel, social media marketer of, of 10 years, and I have a proven system to get you a consistent and reliable volume of leads week after week. Furthermore, I know you might have been burnt by agencies in the past. I know you might have tried to do it yourself and it hasn't worked. That's why for that reason, we offer a full money back guarantee if you're not happy for any reason at any point in time. So we're re reducing every single reason that they would have to say no to our offer and your client's offers to it as close to zero as possible. And that's what that value equation will show you how to do and run your brand in that filter. So that's number one. Um, number two would be eliminate emotions from your paid marketing campaigns because it's really easy to get a bit scared and a bit kind of antsy about the fact that you might run. Honestly, it's totally possible to run an ad on TikTok for four days and get no sales. Totally, totally possible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will turn it off and go, well, TikTok ads don't work or I'm not sure what to do um, and not take a learning from it. The fact that you've probably got a several thousands amount of impressions from doing that over four days at 20 pounds a day, so you've spent, uh, what, 80 pounds, is there's data there if you have the patience and just kind of the level-headedness and the groundness uh, to look at it and dissect what is the learning here was it the fact that people didn't watch past a certain point of this video? Was it the fact that, you know, the cost to actually show the ad was a lot higher than average? Like there's bits to look at it. Yeah. Um, but that would be my second point to remove emotions from that, that marketing exercise. Um, my third and final point would be to stick to a schedule. So that four-day testing period. Um, people kind of live you know, on hopium here in Australia, especially when they're running ads, especially business owners that are running their own ads. And I'll have a consult with them and they've been running the same ad for the past 30 days, not touched it. And you can see literally in a line graph, you can see the results going like this. And I'm like, why didn't you pick this up like two weeks ago? And they're like, well, you know, I thought it would just get better. And I was like, it's not magic. You're going to get better. Like you have to address it. So yeah. it would be to have a schedule at which you are putting your eyes across your TikTok campaign. So having a schedule that you stick to. So nail your offer, remove emotions from marketing campaigns and stick to a schedule. Next question, kind of based off what we were just talking about. If an ad is not working, it's it's doing bad, you've not got any sales, you've not got any leads, you know, maybe it's hit the wrong audience. What do you think the main thing that, that tends to be the reason behind that? Is it often the creative that's the problem? Is it the potentially the way that they've set the ad up? Um, and then how can they kind of make those changes to optimize for, for a better campaign in the future? Majority of the time it is neglect. 
tips from the consults that I do. So I'll go into a, a business owner's TikTok ad account or Facebook ad account and we'll spend an hour there on Zoom. Majority of the time you can see there's a fair bit of neglect. Like I mentioned earlier, people just leave their ads running for weeks on end without touching it, hoping it's going to get better. <clears throat> but that neglect is solved by having using something like this four-day testing period. Even if all you did was just check up on your ads every four days, you'd probably be ahead of most businesses trying to use TikTok ads by in you know the top 5%, I would yeah. say, at least from what I've seen. So that's definitely one of the drivers is just a general neglect of checking up on your ads. And the second part similar to that would be if your TikTok ads are working really well, don't rely on them working well without you putting in some work preemptively. So it's inevitable that your ad will run out of steam. It's the same reason why they don't run the same TV commercials or infomercials. Back in the day, I might be showing my age here, but remember like the, the infomercials for Ad King Pro and like, um, Chuck Norris would be on there, like on the, no, that's Total Gym. He'd be on the Total Gym, like doing his sit ups and stuff like that. But they would do something like in a year, Guthy Ranker, I think that was the name of the company, would do something like six or seven different creatives for that yeah. one infomercial spot at the same time, mainly because people get numb to the same ad every single time. And it happens a little bit faster on TikTok, general attention spans. And so if you take that into account, you don't neglect those side of things with your TikTok ads and you'll probably find it work really well. And if you're doing really well and your ads are, let's say, I don't know, getting a 10x return, so for every $100 you spend, you get $1,000 back, fantastic. You should still be sticking to that four-day testing schedule and trying to see whether you can beat your previous best. And that's going to save you from becoming stagnant and it's going to keep you ahead of this kind of declining performance curve. So you're not reacting when things are bad you're yeah. proactive before things get bad yeah. yeah but um really quick uh if your ads tiktok ads aren't working um and you're not entirely sure why the thing i tend to look at is what is the cost if you're sending people to a website what is the cost to get them to a, the website so cost per landing page view that wants to be under um one dollar or probably in the uk even cheaper about let's say you say cents like what's less than what's less than a dollar what's less than a pound then pence pence thank you so 80 pence yeah is that right take one pound and minus it by 20 percent, and that's what i'm talking about yeah. <laughs> so um that monetary value would be the max that you would pay to get someone from a tiktok ad to a website now that's mostly going to be for people in the e-commerce realm selling uh, products online. Uh, when it comes to someone using, say, something like a lead generation form, opens up, puts the contact details in it, submit it, and it stays on TikTok, it really comes down to how many of those leads you're converting mm -hmm. and, you know, what's your price point. So um, I've got a vested interest in a solar company here in Queensland with a business partner, Daniel, who I grew up with. We sell solar systems anywhere north of um, $12,000. So we can afford to spend quite a bit per lead, up to $120 usually, to acquire um, a lead. And then about one or four of them, 25%, will convert into a $12,000 sale. Those are the numbers yeah. that we run. But for someone who doesn't have a, such a high price point, let's just say you are mowing someone's lawn for $200 or, you know, 80 pounds or whatever it is, you would want to try and keep your lead cost as low as possible. So if your lead cost is blowing out, then that's something that you would want to address. And you can do it by either improving your offer, again, read the book, and or refresh your creative, especially if you've had good results and now they're declining. If you're going to drive an ad to a website, which page would you recommend it going to? So a landing page, product page, would you have a very specific period, you know, associated with that ad? Yeah, good point. So say for jewellery, if you're advertising one jewellery item, just the one product, send them directly to that product page. Uh, you can use a style of ad in TikTok called collections. Um, so we do it with a, a client here in Australia who sells mirrors. And they're, they're, they're quite aesthetically pleasing mirrors, but they have these kind of tech functions to it as well. They're Bluetooth. You can... Click, you can kind of press this touch button on it and you can change the hue or the, the type of light, the color of the light behind it. Um, anyway, they have 60 products on their website. So we can't really, with their budget, we can't really show them all. So we use a collection style ad. 
So what, what it does is on Shopify is we pull a catalog across to TikTok or Facebook and it will automatically show and cycle through products to show people. And then what, what you'll end up seeing is over say a statistically significant amount of time, like 30 days, you'll just see one of your products selling more often than, than not than, than other products on your website. Yeah. And that, especially if you're just running TikTok ads, that means that TikTok has identified that product as a winner and it's getting showed more. So yeah. if you've got a lot of products, use a collection style ad. If you don't, send them direct to your product page. With TikTok Shop, can you integrate that with TikTok ads? Oh, definitely. It's really funny we're talking about it because uh, I remember when Facebook Shop was going to be was going to be pushed really heavily and they're going to bring out their own crypto and they'll partner with Shopify to bring some of that integration so that everything stayed on Facebook, Yeah, which made sense. And I think TikTok will go the same way if it's not quite there already. Yeah. But integrating it really comes from, I mean, if you can generate a link for your TikTok shop or even if it is just your bio, if you instruct people what to do next, like your call to action is very specific, succinct and to the point, then you can still run an ad, maybe even a community interaction ad where you're getting new followers and then sending them direct to your profile off the back of that creative saying, this is what you need to do if you want to check out this product or this collection of products, definitely. Um, what would you say like the biggest challenges are associated with ads? Like, you know, for these guys that, that want to give it a go on their own without any help from an agency or, or anything like that, what are the challenges that you think people tend to face and how can they maybe overcome them? I've found with TikTok, obviously you have the majority of people who have success like yourself are creatives. You'll find it difficult to have success with TikTok ads if you're not a creative. Mm -hmm. And I will find it comes naturally to some people and it doesn't come naturally to others. For me personally, I have so many ridiculous, dumb TikTok videos backed up in my drafts that I'll never post. I send them to my friends. I think think they're hilarious. Yeah. Um, but that's that's kind of a form of expression. So I would consider myself to be somewhat of a creative as well. Not everyone's like that. And if you're not like that, then you would need to outsource help. What I really recommend is finding other creators, and they're all over past over TikTok, not necessarily influencers, but people who you can see via the content that they post, even if they don't label themselves as creators, Yeah. to say, hey, I've got a 100-pound, 200-pound budget to do a video for an ad. I really love your stuff. Would I be able to pay you to read this script? And so that addresses this kind of lacking of creative inspiration, which we all kind of have, but, you know, other people suffer from it than more than others. Yeah. So that would be one that I would use definitely. Um, and, again, some people aren't happy to put their face on the video, which has been around for years and years and years, and that's fine, and that's where we would, for our clients, we would outsource and find a creator um, within their budget to do that and read a script that we would write and that kind of jazz. <clears throat> um, that would be the, the main kind of problem is uh, constantly cycling new creative ideas into the mix. So um, I don't know how I'd get it to anyone, but one of our best performing ads for our solar brand is a jump scare. And I think it's hilarious because my business partner pours coffee all over himself as part of the creative. But it's a jump scare where – I don't know if anyone's seen it, but the baseball comes at the camera and the guy just misses it with his baseball bat and it hits the camera like it's pretty scary stuff. And then it cuts to my business partner and he's in his solar business shirt. He tips coffee all over himself and then he goes into his hook, which yeah. is if you tip Cup of Joe all over yourself when you get your electricity bill, this is for you. So it's got this entertaining intro on it. It commands attention, engagement, keeps people in the laughs because, yeah. let's be honest, no one wants to see out about solar panels. They really don't. Um, so by moving towards a um, a direction of how do we want a, how do we want people to feel when they see our ad uh, has had a great impact. So again, just harnessing your creative expertise, and if that's not your jam then outsourcing that to someone who you can see that that's something that they uh, definitely excel in. Um, I'm just going to quickly go back to Fox and Willow, um, her question before about the algorithm. She said another TikTok seller has said that the algorithm has changed and her reach has dropped. Um, Her orders at Christmas have dropped off. They were higher at Christmas time and they've dropped off now. Um, So from, from my perspective as like organic TikTok, 
I think the algorithm n never necessarily changes it's just constantly adjusting and your reach kind of differs from from time to time and everyone has that same um experience on TikTok I think recently videos seem to be getting pushed out a little bit um longer so uh, instead of getting 500 views in the first hour you might get those 500 views over 24 hours and then your video yep. might pick up further and further after that period of time um christmas obviously depending on what her her business was if she was selling gift ideas and you know things that people wanted at that time it's obviously then going to drop off after christmas um mm. but from my perspective i don't think the algorithm has massively changed and I think people just need to kind of reevaluate their their creative and you know what they're posting have a look at their strategy what's worked well in the past is that still working for you now what we tend to see is people have changed their style in video and then say oh the algorithm's changed I'm not getting the views but that tends to be kind of something from the back you know the back end something that they've kind mm -hmm. of done um but Revel, it'll be interesting to to hear your thoughts on on like algorithm um and, and maybe what that has um what impact that has on paid ads as well well to be honest like i have no idea what the algorithm does i know how an algorithm works right yeah. so um for the most part uh i've noticed that if you can get some good amount of engagement let's say within the first 20 minutes to an hour of your TikTok post there is a higher than not likelihood that you'll get a further push from that, from what I've noticed. So let's say that you post something and it gets 20 comments within the first 20 to 30 minutes. That's a really good signal so far as I've noticed. So <clears throat> however you want to encourage people to engage with your TikTok posts, all that kind of stuff, save it, all of that good stuff that's all over your page. Um, and you guys are you're like, you're very much an expert at it. So uh, however you can encourage people to do that. But so far as I've noticed, like, I really enjoy the process. I get, you know, as business owners, we've kind of got to marry this this labor of love with making money. But for me personally, I, I really try to focus on enjoying the process. So for me, I don't post nearly as much as I should. Uh, but the ones that I do post, they're, they're effortless to me. And I posted one today about Dr. Fate because I'm a massive superhero geek with my brother. That's all we talk about. It was on the phone to him about two hours ago talking about the fact that he hadn't seen the new Ant Man movie yet. And I was kind of like, hurry up, I'm slowing up. But um, that kind of stuff, you know, is just spur of the moment. It is fairly impulsive. Um, uh, three, three weeks ago, I had a video about the TikTok CEO go viral and get about 11 million views. And then my. Uh, view, viewership has kind of gone between 400 to 1,000 views since then. It's kind of like, well, that's just the nature of the beast. But, you know, given that this is the only platform that offers you that opportunity to yeah. have one month, two months, three months of 100 views per video, and then for no particular reason you get 11 million, I'm like, well, I'll take that trade every day. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No one's ever going to know to the T what the algorithm is and what, you know, no one will ever know that apart from the people that designed it. Um, but from our perspective, it's it's as simple as, as you just said, TikTok literally tells you if a video is going to perform well because you'll get the views, you get the results. So just by by trying to consider that and by recreating what's worked well, that's, you know, that's, that's our, our biggest recommendation, really. Um, let's love said we used to do just funny content for engagement and now i do product based content but never gets as high engagement so again i think um funny content and, and things like that they do work they get the views they get the followers they get the comments but do they get the customers not as much obviously you need to have a, a, a mix because if you're just posting loads of like funny small business videos that other small businesses can relate to for example you know they're going to love your posts but they might not ever then become a customer because they don't actually care about your product so having a mix between two is is really important you know you need to entertain you need to engage you need to educate you know people don't want to feel like they're being sold to all the time and don't want to you know like tiktok say don't they don't make ads make tiktoks so by 
thinking about the way that you're promoting and by following the structure that Revel spoke about before, having that hook that addresses the pain point, having the body, uh, the value, um, and then positioning your products as their solution. I think you absolutely nailed that. And one point I would sort of just tack on to there, if I may, would be how do you want people to feel on the first impression of your ad or your content piece? That has been such a revolutionary way of approaching our content, specifically for ads too. <clears throat> Again, if I use the solar brand that we have as an example, no one wants to see ads about solar. They loathe them here on the east coast of Australia because there's lots of sun, so there's so many companies. So it's, it's a bit like, it's a bit boring, it's very saturated. So by approaching all of our content for our ads by how can we make people laugh? We're using a comedic angle here and then we're going to tie in the fact that we're also selling solar systems. I actually recall seeing it on an ad about socks. I like using uh, examples of products that are everyday products like socks. And the real key take, uh, the unique selling point was the fact that they were anklet socks that didn't roll down, that didn't fall off. And the way that they displayed the utility of that they didn't fall off was dragging a man behind a car by his socks with those anklet socks on. So you can imagine the obscene comments and laugh that came off the back of an ad like that. Not that you have to go and drag, you know, your uh, <laughs> yeah. stepmom behind the car. But that's the kind of level of thinking that I, we approach a lot of our clients' ads, whether it be not so much organic, but definitely encouraging them to do that when they're organic as well. But absolutely, their paid TikTok ads is how do I want someone to feel off the back of this first impression with this yeah. ad? Do I want them to uh, feel happy? Do I want to have them in the fields? Is this a charitable ad? You know, the World Vision ads where they've kind of got the starving kids with a bloated belly and they're all sick. You know, they're all skinny and they've got some sad music in the background that is literally designed psychologically to put you in the fields so that you feel more charitable to give them some money. Um, and then also controversy, controversy, I think, is a topic that isn't utilised enough. If I was to use my, the example that I have on my pinned at the top of my pages, if anyone's interested, the TikTok CEO, they've got 11 million views. I brainstormed that with my brother. It's controversial because it's kind of like the TikTok CEO doesn't let his kids on TikTok. I'm like, whoa, that's kind of controversial. Like, the CEO of TikTok, what's going on there? And then furthermore, it's in the, the topic of or the subject of parenting, which is pretty subjective. Anyway, everyone's got an opinion on what is good and bad parenting. Yeah. So, like, this is a recipe for engagement, in which it just completely took off. And I didn't even bother responding to any comments because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get through that. Um, but controversy, where you can utilise that and um, harness that for your brand with ads or organic content where people feel triggered or encouraged to express their opinion on your content, almost guaranteed to get, you know, higher than average viewership, if not to result to paid ads, definitely. Yeah. On a radio, we said, is it better to drive the customer to your website or your TikTok shop so you can collect the data? Good question. I would say that your website is much more customizable than a TikTok shop so far as I understand. So for that reason, I would use the website. Um, your Shopify, if we're, I'm assuming we're using Shopify, uh, but if we're not, your websites, you can cater to that entire customer experience. So it's going to be kind of like the TikTok shop, so far as I understand, compared to a website. It'd be like going to a restaurant where you have restrictions around what items and what furniture you can move around and it's not fully customizable. And then yeah. you're going to a restaurant where you can definitely see they were able to customize everything in that restaurant. You would have a better experience there. So that's why I would usually go for the website over the TikTok shop, particularly with uh, paid advertising. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so to end the the episode of Talk Talks, uh, what we do with, with, with everyone who joins is we have a quick fire question round at the end. Um, so I've got six short questions and all I need you to do, Revel, is just answer the first thing that comes to your head. Um, the first quick fire question is a, I feel like we've already covered this, but I will ask again. Podcast or book you would recommend? $100 million offers. Um, promote or spark ads? Spark ads. Long-term or short-term ad focus? <sighs> short-term. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok ads or Facebook ads? Uh, 
<laughs> I hope no. I've only got two viewers on this side, so I can say this TikTok ads. <laughs> <laughs> Um, top tip for a small business owner. Continuously refine and work on your offer and care about your customer experience, how you service them after sales, because it is a very serious thing to have customers talk about you. Wouldn't it be great to not have to run ads and just perpetually have snowballing customers referring new customers to? And then third would be outsource the things you really hate doing because we're in business, hopefully, to make money, yes, but to have fun doing it because you're spending north of 30 hours a week doing that. That's a big portion of your life. Yeah. I hope we all want to be happy doing that. So where you can, and it makes financial sense, outsource the stuff that doesn't make you happy. Yeah, perfect. And the last question is your final piece of advice for running a TikTok ad. I would watch Anna's content pieces on ideas for topics for different brands or your brand, and I would take that influence and create four ads, and I would run your four ads that way. And if you wanted to take it a step further from using inspiration around Anna's content ideas, around topics, what to talk about, you can take that and then push it through my video about how to create a good video ad. And then you've got a recipe for a high converting TikTok advertisement. I feel like that is, you've hit the nail on the head. Organic tips from me, paid ads tips from you, pop them together and you've got to have a killer TikTok advert. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely absolutely my friend well thank you so much travel for joining your tips have been amazing i'm sure everyone's took loads of notes from this session we will be posting this on youtube and to our podcast as well so anyone that wasn't able to join today can listen um but yeah massive thank you to you and also obviously a massive thanks to everyone who's been watching engaging commenting and things like that Excellent. May I have one ask? If anyone has questions about TikTok advertising, could you please ask me on my video so I can make video replies because I'm lazy with my content. I just want to make video replies, please. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. <laughs> if anyone's got any questions, head over to Revel's page and comment them on his videos and he will do a little video reply. Perfect. Thank you so much, Anna. You have a wonderful Thank day, you. yeah? Yeah, you too. See you all soon. Bye.